This is a game where my opponent shook his head a lot before he resigned. Put his head down and shook his head. He was crying. I don't know about this. I don't know about it. Yeah. yeah. I like the anagrams more than the games. Bam. <laughs> I'm from New York. I grew up playing at Susan Polgar's Chess Club in Queens. So you must have seen Fabiano Caruana there when he was a little kid. That's pretty cool, Maximus. I guess you probably saw that Susan Polgar just got inducted into the Chess Hall of Fame in St. Louis. There's two Hall of Fames. There's the U.S. Hall of Fame and the World Hall of Fame, and she's inducted into both. She was already in the U.S. Hall of Fame. Uh, now which, she's in the World Chess Hall of Fame. Which, which the, one is in St. Louis? Both it's, there. Oh, they're both there. There's two, there's two halls of fame, and they're both there. I didn't even know that. Uh-huh. I just know about the one across the street with the big thing. That's, that's, it has both in there. Oh. There's yeah, there's pictures there. of who's in the World Chess <laughs> Hall of Fame. There's pictures of who's in the U.S. Chess Hall of oh, Fame. Oh, okay. Very few people are in both. So she's in both? Yes. Nice. Yeah, what about Judith? Well, she's probably in the World Hall of Fame, but she's probably not in the U.S. Hall of Fame for obvious reasons. Yeah, we don't have our club anymore, Maximus. We sold it to a friend of ours, and it's called the Chess Zone. It's in the same place, but it, and some of the employees are the same. We still go up there occasionally, but I haven't played chess there, but I think just that Blitz tournament. Mm -hmm. It's... You know, just as nice as it ever was. I'm busy. Mm hmm Poker. Same as it ever was. So this is one of the games where I learned an opening by opening a book on an airplane. I had a hardcover book from the 1970s on the Sicilian uh, uh, Rouser variation. So... I opened it up on an airplane in like 1993, maybe. And, or I'm sorry, the Sozin, not the Rouser. And this is one of the main lines of the Velomirovich attack. Okay, Rook H, yeah, okay, this position. So I remember opening the book up and it was in descriptive. And there was a diagram and the diagram had this position. And I was like, well, the, the diagram is wrong. The queen's on D8. But then it said black just played queen to king one. And I was like, black played here? Why? So I've played this move like six or seven times, and I've won every time because I read the analysis and so forth. The most common moves are queen C7 and knight A5. And the difference between queen C7 and queen E8, they both defend the knight. So you want to play B5, but your knight's hanging. Mm -hmm. So you could play queen here or queen here and then play b5. Queen here is good when they try to checkmate you because your queen is here and it's defending g6. And sometimes when their queen's on h5, you can play f5 attacking their queen. So queen on e8 has more, and people don't know queen e8, and this move was invented in 1973 by Alexander Belyovsky, who beat me earlier in this stream. Terrible. Okay, so I play queen e8. This is against Andres Rodriguez Villa. And he's was or currently is, I don't know, this was in 1999, the best player in Uruguay. But I don't think he is now, but because the game was 24 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had the exact same FIDE rating, 2,500. How do we get paired? Okay, he played Rook H, G1, which is the main move. He wants to play G4, G5, 97. G4, knight C5. This is a common maneuver. King B1. Knight takes. And you can take all three ways here. I wonder what the engine wants to do. Sometimes C takes is the right move because it makes the king the safest. Okay, here the engine has a clear preference for knight takes. He took with the pawn. I played B5. And he played F4, so now I was on my own. I don't know F4. Okay, so I play bishop d7, which is correct. Play g5. b4 is correct. Knight a4 is correct. And in this position, I played a strange move. Uh, I was worried about taking this during the game because I thought he might play bishop f6. But it says I'm okay if I play rook e8. 
because he's opening the G file if I take it so I can get in trouble. Yeah. Uh, so I did something else. I traded everything. I played E5. The engine says E5 is a good move. Then he took everything that I took. And now I played bishop c5, attacking his rook and his bishop. So he played bishop d4. We traded, and I took on a4. Now material is equal. But I figured my king was safer than his. But the engine says white's better here. It likes his position better. Okay, he played e5, and I thought he was going to play e6. And I was like, so? Okay, that was the wrong thing to say. I should have put a rook on e8. So I played a5, which is a terrible move. He played e6. And I was like, if he plays e7, I'll just go here and win it. So I wasn't worried about it. And he's just winning here. I mean, the pawn's on e7. And now I realize, damn, that pawn's strong. I can't win it. <laughs> and, you know, he can always play here. So this is, he's just winning strategically. Okay, so now I had to, like, you know, try to mix it up a little. So I played b3. Okay, and he played the only good move. C takes b3. And I played queen g6 check, which attacks his pawn on g5 also. Uh, so I can take his pawn on g5 next move if he moves his king. However, it's possible I can't take his pawn because of rook d8. Take, take. take. No, I don't think I can take it. I think rook d8 wins. Yeah, rook d8 wins. If I take this way, then he queens. And then he mates me. If I don't take the rook, he just takes this rook. And then when I take back, he queens. If I take this way, he takes, makes a queen, then queen comes here next move. So I can't even take the pawn. So he should have moved his king. Okay, he blundered here. Um, he made the worst legal move. He really did make the worst legal move. Not easy to do. Because he only has about seven or eight legal moves. But mm -hmm. he found the worst one. He played queen e4, losing immediately. I knew queen e4 lost. So I was hoping he would play that. Black to play and win. All right, let's see. You studied my move in chess engines. That's not good. That means I would lose. Oh, yeah, you can just rook e7. Yeah, I did that, and he was very, very, very upset. You know, he was winning, and then he just resigned. <laughs> so he resigned. But he put his head down and shook his head forever, and then, uh. he, then he resigned. I've had another opponent do that, too, who, like, shook his head forever. Ferdinand Hellers. Mm. That was in 1990. Now, what was his best move? I mean, what Any move was better, but King A2 is the best. Just getting out of check. And I'm, it says yeah, he's plus four. And I'm just got... lost. Mm -hmm. Hooray for Ben. Yeah, he uh, pan his queen was... Pan it's pan. like the music group cheap trick. Now, if he takes this, I zwish and zoom yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, check. Yeah. Bummers mm -hmm. for him. No, that was good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, he felt bad after rookie seven. <laughs> I'm just going to check if Karen. I'm hoping they don't text me. Is that the game you played G5, G4? What game? Oh, you're talking about Hellers. Yes. I can't remember things I said a minute ago. Yeah, Hellers, after, when I played uh, G5, he, he put his head down and shook his head forever. <laughs> Yeah. Then he quit chess and became a lawyer. True story. Heller's not Rodriguez. 